What's up guys? Today I'm going to be giving you a video showing you a couple of things that people have asked me how to do. Uh, first I want to say that I did get a new microphone. Yesterday I went and I bought a Shure SM7B. So from now on when you hear anything that I've recorded, it more than likely will be on this microphone. So without further ado, let's get into showing you uh, what you guys have asked for. So the first thing that I've been getting some messages about is how to record uh, with Auto-Tune live in Audition. And so I'm going to show you how to set up your project so that you can monitor yourself with Auto-Tune on. So the first thing that you want to know is that when you're going to be doing this, you're going to have to use an auto-tune that is low latency, which means that it processes very quickly so that when you're monitoring yourself through Audition, um, that it's not going to have a big delay or a delay at all really for that matter because that will mess you up when you're recording and you won't be able to keep time. It's like a speech jammer. So... The plugin that I have for that is called Waves Tune Real Time, and it's an auto tune. It's basically an auto tune VST that's made for real time recording. So you can use it for live performances or monitoring in the studio. So I have right here Waves Real Tune, uh, Waves Tune Real Time. So the first thing you want to do is you want to go to your audio preferences and your audio hardware, and you want your device class to be set up as an ACO, ASIO driver, whatever it is, uh, how you, I don't know how you say that. But you're going to want to look at your buffer size because your buffer size is basically going to be how much delay there is between the time that you speak into the microphone and when you hear it. So it'll change the latency from your voice. So you want to set yours uh, pretty much as low as you can get it without it like snap and crackling and popping because it will do that if it's too low so I usually find that if I'm monitoring live through audition instead of through my uh, audio interface that 32 is usually a pretty good place so set your buffer size to 32 now when you go in you want to arm your track to record which I've already got done so you'll go here mono and select your input so I have my uh, sure SM7B selected. So now you're going to go to your effects rack. And you'll be able to find different uh, auto-tune plugins, but ones like the one that is built into Audition, it's going to have such massive latency, it will be impossible to record with it. So I would suggest getting this Waves Tune real-time plugin. It's actually on sale right now. It used to be, I think, $120. And for right now, it's $25. I bought this last night because I just happened to run across the page and see that it was on sale. So go get this plugin right now while you can. If you have $25, which I know you do, just don't eat at McDonald's for a couple days and buy this plugin because it'll be worth it. So uh, you want to add the plugin. So you'll click an arrow in order to add a plugin. Go to your VSTs effect and down at waves and you got waves tune real time stereo and mono i'm going to go ahead and use uh the stereo one because when you use the mono one it does like this panning effect uh i'm not really sure why it does that and you think but think it would be the opposite but anyways use the stereo one and here's where you adjust all your settings so you can select your scale your key if it's a flat or sharp key that you're singing in you've got your formant uh which is basically your, your throat size. So when you're singing uh, lower, your voice will have a wider formant shape. And when you go up, your vocal cords constrict and your voice becomes uh, thinner when it gets higher. So that will kind of adjust that for you and make it sound more natural when you sing. Because when you sing, your voice shape changes according to how high or low you're singing. Once you've got this here, all you have to do to monitor yourself and be able to hear yourself is just click this little eye right here. And this is going to give you the monitoring in your ears. So when you speak into the microphone, you will hear yourself. And it's not going to be zero latency like it would be if you're using an audio interface. But it will be very close. Like I'm speaking into the mic with the monitoring from Audition showing me or 
with the monitoring from Audition on, and it sounds pretty good. There's not really any delay that's causing my brain to be weird about what is happening. So I could probably record like this, which I do occasionally record live with Autotune on. So that is the plugin that you're going to want to use for that. Um, if there's any questions about how to set this up that I didn't answer, I think I got everything, but just let me know in the comments and I will, um, and I will clarify for you and I'll, I'll do as much as I can to help you. All right. So the second thing that I want to be showing you guys how to do is, I'm, and I'm not really sure what the actual name for the effect is, but it's when you have a vocal and it almost reverse fades in and builds up to the drop of the vocal. So I'll just go ahead and show you what I'm talking about, and then I'll tell you how to do it. So listen to this. Did you hear how it kind of built up from nothing? I'll go ahead and show that to you again with just the vocals, no instrumental. I don't want to count my strike. So it gives it gives it a nice smooth fade in effect. So let me go ahead and show you how to make that. So the first thing that you want to do is I'm just going to get rid of this for now. Okay, so you want to go to the beginning of your vocal and go ahead and play it. So this is what we have. I don't want to count my strikes. I don't want to count my Blessing. Sorry, it's a little laggy right now. Um, so what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to highlight from the very beginning of the vocal and you want to leave quite a bit of space. Enough space so that you can make it fade in. And you'll see what I mean in a minute. So go ahead and get about this much vocal and you want to go ahead and export this to a new track. So you're going to want to bounce it to a new track, selected clips in time selection. And what this is going to do is going to create a version of that vocal that has all the effects that are on your effects rack on it, but it will be uh, by itself. So this is what the vocal is going to sound like once you bounce it out. I don't want to count my strikes. I don't want to count. All right. So the next step from here is we're just going to take this first part. I don't want to count. I don't want to count. Just this. I don't. I don't want to. And then we're going to delete all this. I don't actually delete it. Just silence it. So this is what we have now. I don't want to. I don't want to. That's all you want on this. So what you're going to do next is you're going to apply reverb to it. So I'm going to go to my ambiance reverb, which is what I use for everything. And you're going to want to be heavy on the reverb. So that it fades out for a long time. So let me show you. I don't want to. Hear how it's so heavy that it takes forever for it to go away? You should be able to visually see it on your waves map on the computer. So this is what it looks like now. I don't wanna... So I that's don't... perfect. What we have right now is perfect. So now what you're going to want to do, go to Effects and Reverse. And you want to reverse it. So now when you play it, this is what you have. And it's almost as simple as that. All you have to do now is go back to your multi-track, bring this in, oops. And what I usually do is I'll cut off the part where my voice actually is and just keep the reverb in. And then you'll just add this on top of here. And normally I'll trim it down and you can also speed it up. So if you go up here and put your mouse here, you'll see this time stretch option. And if you just click and drag, you can speed it up. And normally, one other thing that I'll do is I'll go into the singular track editor and I'll go to the presets. And if you scroll down, scroll down, I have a lot of presets, sorry. Scroll down, scroll down, scroll down, you'll see this effect called Stereo Maker Hass Effect. And what this will do is it'll make uh, the left and the right channel, uh, it'll separate them a little bit in time, so it'll actually pan it left to right. So it'll sound like this. See how it splits it up from left to right? I'll apply that. And that's pretty much it. So now let me play it uh, with this here, and I'll show you how it sounds. I don't want to count my 
It's a little harsh in the beginning, so I'm just going to go over here to my gain editor. I'm going to make it fade in a little bit. I don't want to count my strikes. That's pretty much it, guys. That's uh, that's how to do that effect and how to record with autotune live on your vocals. So if you have anything else, let me know, and I will do my best to get to it. I'm trying to be more on top of my videos now. So, um, yes, yeah, send me something. Let me know what you want to hear. If you've heard me do something in my music, go ahead and ask me about it, and I'll do my best to show you how. So thank you for watching. I hope I helped. Uh, have a wonderful Christmas.